Hey everybody, well, I'm down a side street in London, somewhere I don't know, which is never a good sign, but I'm about to go and do a photo shoot with a guy who is doing a new project, a new campaign, and he said that I could bring you along with me. So get ready, because I'm going to put on some, some better clothes and um, try and look good for a photo shoot. Okay everybody, welcome to Heart Talks. Well today, as I said, I was down a dark street getting some pictures done and it was by this man here. This is Dennis Robinson. Hey everyone. <laughs> so Dennis is doing a project called Proud Portraits and he's invited me along to ask a couple of questions today. So Dennis, why? That's a, I suppose that's a good place to start, isn't it? Yeah, I think, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, I've been thinking about doing a project within the LGBTQIA community for a while, and I couldn't quite get my head around what that would look like or what that would be. Mm -hmm. And it was funny, here in the studio one night, we just finished a shoot, and the guy who was on the shoot with me of something else, we were having some wine, and we started talking about it's a sin. And uh, Adam, the guy who was on the ship with me, is exactly 20 years younger than me. Um, and um, like typical millennials, they want to unpack everything. And um, so we were unpacking It's a Sin. And he said, so what did you take from It's a Sin? And I went, you know, it was, it was quite hard for me. It was yeah. very triggering. Yeah. That was my era, you yeah. know, the, uh, the early 80s. That's when I kind of, that was my uh, coming of age yes. as a, a young gay bee. Yeah. And... Um, so I was talking about that and I said, you know, I was talking about losing so many friends and the fear and uh, the darkness of those times. And then I said, what did you take from it? And he went, the shame, the amount of shame that was instilled upon, particularly at that point, uh, gay men, the whole mm -hmm. sin thing. And growing up in Ireland, you know, typically there was, uh, even though I wasn't Catholic, you know, you don't get brought up in any part of Ireland without having Catholic guilt. Mm -hmm. um, and it suddenly triggered that the polar opposite of pride is shame. And I was carrying a ton of that around. Yeah. So once I was able to acknowledge that, I was able to start thinking about how do I do something that has, is related to pride and being proud. Um, and actually it was about giving a platform for people to show how proud they are yeah. of how far they've come their journey, um, whatever their, their troubles, their difficulties, their challenges their may story. have been, their yeah. story. And uh, so, so that's why. I understand that you only started taking photographs a couple of years ago. Two and a half years ago. Yeah. So I've been doing hair for, uh, since I was 13, 14. So I'm 52 now, so it's a long time, 38 years. And uh, for many years um, in my hairdressing career, now I do barbering. Um, but for many years, I was what's called a session hairdresser. So I was on sets right. like this, yeah. doing hair for fashion shoots, music yeah. videos, TV commercials. And I always loved the studio. Um, and I've always loved taking pictures. And I just needed a new creative challenge. And uh, hair doesn't challenge me anymore. Right. There's nothing in the hairdressing industry that left that I want to do. Mm -hmm. Everything that I've wanted to do, I've done, You've whether done. it be you know, doing hair for Chanel hair shows or working with celebrities or, you know, the Hollywood movie stars, royalty, whatever it might be, or even just the technicalities of hair. There's nothing new yeah. that will make me go, oh, I haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. um, so for my 50th, I bought myself a camera and uh, started working on composition. And I thought, if you're going to do this properly, you better do some courses. And, and then I started doing a little bit of work in the studio for the barbering company that I worked for. And then some of that work got published. And then at the very beginning of last year, I went, it's time to start taking this seriously. So the barbering company that I worked for, I was their creative director. And I stepped down from that role um, so that I would have a little bit more time to study the technicalities of photography. Yeah. And uh, the moral of that story is be careful what you wish for, because I ended <laughs> up getting nothing but time over the last 14 months. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> having only worked for 14 weeks. <laughs> so yes, yeah. it's all quite new. I think it's a creative and you'll get this mm. having something new to as a challenge to master to 
to to fight with, to wrestle with, yeah. to you know, to ch challenge you, to yeah. make you cry, yeah. to make you laugh, yeah. and that that's what creativity is about. Without yeah. without that something to to bite into, yeah. it's not creative anymore. So. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you want this campaign to highlight? Um, you know, if there was if there were, if there was three things you could say. I want it to do this, 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 and this. The okay. main thing ultimately comes from, in 1988, when I moved to London, due to the, the sheer lack of queer spaces, everybody from the queer community, whether they be lesbian, bisexual, gay, transgender, people of colour, whatever it might be, we, we, we had so few spaces to go to, we, we all went to the same spaces. Mm -hmm. And typically, as society became more affluent and more places started opening up and people were wanting to fill those nights and uh, you would maybe have uh, lesbians were feeling hard done by by uh, the, le the gay community and rightfully so in yeah. my opinion yeah. so they wanted to create their own spaces that were safe where everybody was welcome mm -hmm. and the same could be said for people of colour and the same could yeah. be said for transgender people um, I think the community was a better space when there were fewer choices yeah. because we were all in it together. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, if I can hold a lens up to that, I, the fact that I think within our own marginalized society, um, we sadly have chosen a patriarchal model, which is you know, white middle-class men controlling things and being a homogenized image of who we are. Mm -hmm. So. I want to show diversity, I want yeah. it to be inclusive, I want to destroy the patriarchy and I want, hopefully, the main thing um, would be to educate um, and that's, that's always the biggie for me yeah, yeah. because I think there are so many people out there that just don't understand how damaging, marginalising people who are your people yeah is to those people but to the people doing it as well because yes. they don't realize how much they're harming themselves yeah. because they're lesser people because of their narrow mindedness yeah yeah, yeah. so education I, I, would be the education biggie is... to be an inclusive thing yeah I, I said from the beginning that if i wasn't getting the bite from enough people from within the community i would abandon the project because i didn't want it to be all about one element or the other element, you know, if all I had got was butch lesbians, it wouldn't be a project about inclusivity and diversity. Yeah. It would have been a project about butch lesbians. But you haven't had that problem. I really haven't had that problem. Have been... <laughs> so, so tell us where, where is pa Proud Portraits going to be? What is Portrait? You know, what is what is the? Where can people see it? Right. Well, you know, initially it's. Um, I'm kind of. I'm, I've been doing some teasers on on my uh, on my Instagram page, Dennis Shoots. I'm holding the majority of them back though, because there is going to be an exhibition in Soho um, over the anniversary of the Stonewall riots, so the, which is the 28th of June. Yeah. I'm hoping that it will go up around about the 24th and stay up to the 30th or the 1st of July. And that's in a heritage fashion brand. I can't mention the name just yet because I haven't signed any contracts. Okay. Um, but uh, more news will come. And we're doing a window takeover, so they will be facing out into the street, which is incredible because, the, you know, it's also, that is one of the key post-lockdown opening updates yeah. when they believe everything will be back to right. normal right. would be from Monday the 21st. So Soho is going to be crazy. Yes. You know, the height of yes. summer. Yes. Um, so I think from a visibility point of view, it will be there. We're also in talks of it becoming, uh, licensing it to uh, one of the major LGBTQ charities, plus charities, because they're wanting to uh, celebrate the inclusivity and diversity that we're, we're, we're celebrating with mm -hmm. the, the, the campaign, with the shoot. And I, um, it will be on social media. I have copyrights, so it doesn't matter what anybody else wants to do with them, I'll, I'll put them up when I want to put them out. Yeah. But equally, everybody, when I have a kind of critical mass, yeah. then I'm going to send them out to everyone who's been involved and go, I'd like you all to drop yeah. them yeah. on this day. Yeah. I'd like you to use these yeah. hashtags and I'd like to get a little bit of, of movement going. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully that, that yeah. is what's going to happen. Well, and I'm wanting really to start doing that element of it probably from mid-May. Even the, even the few that you've done that I've seen so far have just been like, whoa, you know, um, they've been really, 
you know, they're just, they're, they're just really good photographs, you know, and, and obviously I, I've been somebody that knows about having your photograph taken because of headshots for yeah. um, the last million years. So, um, so yeah, they are, they are great shots. The one of Adrian, um, so yeah, yeah, it's just, gorgeous um, Adrian. yeah, yeah. So, um, so where can people find your work? At the moment, they can see it. So I'm on Instagram, which is uh, Dennis One N and Dennis. I'm a One N then mm -hmm. um, underscore shoots, um, or you can have a look on my website, which is www.dennisrobinson.co.uk. Uh, uh, so that's where you can see my body of work, um, and increasingly more of the pride portraits will be going on to the Instagram. Mm -hmm. So that's you know, if they want to have a look at the body of work, that's certainly where they can see it. Okay, and I'm gonna um, have a little. Uh, bit of a photo shoot for um, Dennis's next person that's coming along to see him. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of a backstage shoot um, on here and let you see what goes on in a photo shoot. Um, and I will, I will definitely, we'll, we'll, we need to do something, Dennis, when it is all out, yes. when it is all happening, um, we'll get you back you on our tours. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll be there, we'll be, um, because I know people will be interested, because obviously people, you know already, you've seen already that people are interested yeah. in sharing their stories. Yeah, and being, that, that, that's been huge. I wasn't yeah. expecting the yeah. responses. I wasn't expecting the stories. I wasn't expecting the stories. I wasn't expecting the faith and the trust that people were going to put in me when they hadn't even met me. Yeah. And that really made me realise just how much there is a there was a need for that channel for people who are marginalised to get their stories out there. Yeah. It's just huge. Yeah. It's only just sinking in to me just how important this project is yeah. to other people. Yeah. It's important to me, but um, how important it is to people like yourself, yeah. people like the young non-binary trans masculine person who came in on the first day who wanted yeah. to show me their scars after their top yeah. surgery. That's a big deal. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'd be an emotional wreck, but, um, <laughs> but in a good way, yeah. because I think with all that shame comes all that lockdown of who you are yeah. and your emotions. So to be able to actually let those bubble up and bubble bubble over. Um, even my best friend said to me yesterday that he thinks I've turned into a nicer person. He <laughs> thought I was always going to be an asshole. <laughs> so see, it's done some good. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, 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 you're just, you're being nice to me. I, mean, I haven't seen you for four months. <laughs> Be nice That's to everyone I haven't seen for four months. That's the reason. Yeah. Okay, Dennis. Well, thank you. Um, thank you for coming on Heart Talks. Um, if you want to know anything else about the project, anything else about Dennis, just drop it in the comment section below and I will let Dennis know. I will ask him questions. I will forward on any information that you need um, and keep your eyes open, especially if you're in London um, for Proud Portraits. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank, thank you, Dennis. You. Um, see you later. See you later. As I'm walking through your place, I'm shaking. I am picturing the worst in my mind. I cannot stand.
So everybody, thank you for watching Heart Talks. Please remember to like, share, comment and subscribe. And this picture is the one that Dennis took of me and that is going to be used in the campaign.